Welcome back to the Relaxing Ghost Channel here on YouTube. As always, your host with the most ghost. And today I'm going to be discussing the WWE name change in 2002. So this was a, a huge change in WWF, WWE. You know, it was really hard getting used to. And a lot of people to this day, when you ask them about wrestling, if they're not up with the current product, they will still say, oh, WWF, you mean, you know, wrestling like Hulk Hogan and Macho Man and things like that. And say, yeah, it's WWE now. Oh, yeah, well, when did that happen? The name change actually happened back in 2002, for those that are unaware. May the 5th, 2002, WWE officially launched the Get The F Out campaign, and they changed all of their WWF uh, stuff, you know, whether it was merchandise, all their rings, their ring skirts, their aprons, their logos, everything from WWF over to WWE. This was huge. It t probably took them months and weeks, weeks and weeks and months to finally change everything over. Um, I'm not sure I'll have to go back and watch that episode of Raw from May the 6th and actually see what exactly their show looked like. You know, it's easy to change a logo for TV, but when you have to change ring skirts, you know, TV uh, equipment and things like that, and turnbuckle pads and all kinds of different things, it it doesn't happen overnight. I'm sure they could have seam, seamstresses there working on a, a few of the things, but I'll definitely have to check out that episode of Raw. Um, I do want to grab one pay-per-view here. Insurrection 2002 would be the final WWE or WWF broadcast. And this was May the 4th, 2002. This is also the plane ride from hell that took place during this trip. So this did not just happen overnight in 2002. This goes back to 1994 and even prior to that. In 1994, WWF had an agreement with the World Wildlife Fund. They could use the WWF acronym since they both were using it since 1979. And they were supposed to minimize the acronym when spoken. Um, and they were allowed to use the old block style logo at the time, which is where people get confused what they were allowed to use, what they weren't allowed to use. Um, so fast forward a few years to the year 2000, they get filed another lawsuit here and for various violations, a ton of merchandise using the scratch logo now. So since they changed their logo, this is where all the violations come into play. Um, I guess they weren't ha the World Wildlife Fund weren't happy with the scratch logo and things like that. So like I mentioned, the last pay-per-view was Insurrection of 2002. Like I mentioned earlier, May 5th, 2002, they launched the Get the F Out campaign. So in this agreement, the scratch logo was prohibited, not allowed. They were allowed original use of the the original logo, which was used from 79 through 94. And it was exempted in the 1994 agreement, which is why the new generation logo was allowed also, the... The new generation logo was the blue and yellow logo, similar to the old block logo. They were similar, which was used from 94 through 98. 
they were allowed to use full names, as in, you know, World Wrestling Federation, without consequences. And this is, uh, this is after 2002, all these things. The Scratch logo was not allowed. And they could not use the acronym WWF. In, in July of 2000, or July of 2012, Raw 1000, the Scratch logo was no longer censored. In old footage, they reached a new settlement. And in WWE home videos, October of 2012, Brock Lesnar, Here Comes the Pain, they did not censor the WWF logo. And that's a bad example to use because most of Brock's career is, you know, into the WWE era. You know, he's... He's maybe had two matches under WWF. Um, so, they, in this new agreement, the Scratch logo is not censored, but they cannot use the WWF initials. You know, World Wrestling Federation Champion, things like that. Um, they cannot use it in new or original footage. New and original footage, packaging, advertisement, things like that. So anything new they make, they cannot advertise it as a WWF product. It has to be a WWE product, which is why we see like uh, these retro Hasbro figures being released as WWE, things like that. Um, John Cena's Word Life, uh, you know, WWE block logo. Anytime... So when, when they air old Attitude Era footage, they can leave it uncensored now. They don't have to blur anything, which is great. You know, a lot of those old DVDs look like crap. All the blurred, you know, logos, all the edits. It just looks horrible watching some of those old DVDs. It does. It come across like Shangata. So let me know your thoughts on this, guys, if you're aware aware that this went back through 1994 the various violations in 2000 and then the get the f out campaign was pretty cool i remember you know a lot of the uh goofy vignettes they did with the the guy trimming the bush or the wwf character going in to get a haircut and he trims off the old uh f off his head and it's like a wwe head logo on his <laughs> thing so that was cool. They did uh, some fun stuff on that. The Rock, of course, telling Austin to get the F out. And when Austin walked out, this did put a damper on WWE home video releases, as we know, with, with Judgment Day in 2002 and Vengeance. And a lot of DVDs would get pulled from shelves due to the name change and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take some time. We'll talk to you later. Peace.